Welcome to this video. Today we are going to take what we've learned in algebra and apply it to geometry. Specifically, we're going to use algebraic properties that you already know to solve problems and to justify each step. So before we begin, we need to do a quick review of the properties of equality that you've already learned in algebra. And the first one is the addition property. It says that if A equals B, then if we add C to one side, then we have to add C to the other side as well. And then the subtraction property says that if we start with A equals B, and then if we subtract C from A, then we have to subtract C from B as well. And then the multiplication property says that if A equals B, then if we multiply the first side by C, we have to multiply the second side by C as well. And then the division property says that if A equals B and C does not equal zero, then if we divide A by C, then we can divide B by C as well. And then the substitution property says that if A equals B, then B can replace A in any expression. In class, I've been saying, what do you see, what do you know? Well, we're going to be doing the same thing, except that we're going to write down each step and justify solving for x. So in this picture, or take a look at this diagram and think for a second, what do you see, what do you know? Well, on this side, we're going to put our statement, and then on the other side, we're going to do our justification. Well, I see that angle AOM and angle MOC are supplementary because angles that form a linear pair are supplementary. So before I actually set up my equation, I need to put down why I'm setting up my equation. Well now, what's going to be a little bit tricky is that we need to switch everything to numbers and we need to use an equal sign because we can't use those properties of equality from algebra until we switch to numbers and variables. So we need to change this. The measure of angle AOM plus the measure of angle MOC equals 180, and that's the definition of supplementary angles. Now, going back to our original diagram, angle AOM has the expression 2x plus 30, and angle MOC or has an x. So we need to substitute and instead of putting this, we're going to put the expression instead. So instead of this information here, we're going to substitute and put an x instead. And that's just the substitution property. Now the next step, you might think that we're using the addition property because we have 2x plus x, which gives us a 3x. But in order to use the addition property, we need to do it to both sides of the equal sign. So in this case, I'm going to put simplify, or I could put combine like terms, either one would work. And now again, I'm trying to get that x by itself. So I would subtract 30 from both sides, and that would leave me with 150. And that is the subtraction property of equality. And then, of course, the last step is we would divide both sides by 3, and that would be the division property of equality. But this next slide, I want you to write these down. This will be on your video quiz. So we're going to review the properties of congruence, and these are going to be brand new. The first one is the reflexive property. And it's kind of like the word reflection, except that the reflection is a mirror image. And this isn't a mirror image. It just says that if you have a segment, it would be congruent to the exact same segment. So for those of you who are visual learners and we're getting ready for Halloween, I thought I would put a face to this so that it might make a little more sense. So let's say that we're given a scary face and we use the reflexive property. Well, it would be congruent to the exact same scary face. It's just congruent to itself. Okay, I really think that scary face is kind of funny. And then applying this to angles, if we start with one angle, it would be congruent to the exact same angle. Angle A is congruent to angle A. Now let's talk about the symmetric property. So if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then segment CD is congruent to segment AB. So look at these, the two of these. 
they are exactly the same, A, B, and C, D, but then we just switch it. We have C, D, and then A, B on this side. So if we're going to, again, um, apply it to a picture, think of it as if we have a scary bat face, then it would be congruent to the same scary bat face, but just flipped. And applying that to angles, if we have a red angle and it's congruent to a blue angle, well then if we just reverse it, we're going to use the same colors, but it would just be that the blue is congruent to the A. Again, just flipped. Now the next one is the transitive property, and it uh, comes from the law of syllogism. And it says that if AB is congruent to segment CD, and segment CD is congruent to segment EF, then segment AB is congruent to segment EF. So look what we have in the middle here. Both segments are congruent to CD. Therefore, they are congruent to each other. And again, think of it as kind of crossing these out and then just combining what's left over. Let's apply it to angles. Again, same idea. Do you see the law of syllogism here? They're both of these angles. A and C are congruent to angle B. They're both congruent to the same angle. Therefore, they are congruent to each other. See you guys in class.